All right, 20-3 complex resistor combinations. We're going to look at the equivalent resistance of a circuit with both series and parallel resistors in that one circuit. So imagine now we have a circuit like most things in real life that are both. Okay, so let's start to remember these three things, okay? We just looked at them a minute ago, but just remember them. Let's take a look at this diagram here, and I do not know why this is such a small diagram. I don't know why I did that like that. Can we learn about circuits in the supernatural In the what? In the supernatural world? Oh, because I keep saying real world. All right, so what we're noticing here is that this arrangement, this arrangement consists of several things. First, 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 first. The, and this, you're not going to believe this, an old picture, but this is a microwave. That's a microwave. That's the microwave in the picture. There's the blender, there's the toaster. It looks like a microwave from like 1970. So here's the microwave. It's plugged in. Focus, guys. It's plugged in here. Okay? It's plugged in in the top outlet. Here's a blender. Here's a toaster. They're both plugged in where? In that little surge splitter. Right? In that surge splitter. And what we're going to notice is this. The flow exits the positive terminal. So the flow comes out of the energy source, hits the terminal, and first it gets here. And it splits between what? Microwave and, well, no, really, microwave and everything else. It doesn't split to the blender right away. It just splits in general. And then that splits off further. So, hold on. So, part of the circuit is parallel. Because the microwave and this entity, blender toaster, is in parallel together. This is like one resistor, and this is like the other resistor here. Okay? Now, beyond that... Wait, no, I lied down. The microwave is getting fed from here. The toaster and blender are both getting fed from here. These outlets run on a parallel circuit. So when it splits, part of the energy goes to the microwave, part of it goes to the bottom outlet, which is both the blender and toaster. Now, once it gets to the blender and toaster combination, it's actually now in series. Okay, believe it or not, I know it's tough to see, but watch. Just look at this portion right here. This little portion is in series right here. If I could simplify this and add these two numbers together, what do I get? 58? 58, exactly. So I could really write this circuit like this. So the microwave is still there, right? But the blender and the toaster are on their own little series circuit. So I could simplify in series by adding these two together. And now this is simplified to 58. But these are clearly in parallel, right? So now we'd have to use the reciprocal law to simplify these. We can't just add them together anymore. We can only add them together when they're in series. This is a little mini series circuit in itself. So you know, you said before, like, if you're in the shower and someone, like, is washing stuff, like, less water comes out. Like, is that, is that like, would this be the same idea applied to this? Like, if you're plugging one of those plugs that has, like, all the sockets, really, you know, one of those long ones that has, like, yeah. two different ones, if you plug that in and then you plug, like, ten different things, like, in, is it going to take, like, longer? And you just have to plug in, like, ten iPhones, like, would they all take longer to charge? No, they wouldn't, actually. Okay. Those circuit, those circuit things, they're parallel and series, but they run on series, so the current is the same throughout them, actually. Um, but they would not take longer, no. They would take the same amount. But that's also because the amount of energy you get can fluctuate based on your needs. So if you have nothing plugged in, it's obviously not providing energy. So it'll provide more or less energy. Okay. Let's look at an example now that we can do mathematically. So let's take a look at this one. All right? I'm going to give you a step or a guideline along the way or several guidelines that will really help you. First thing you can do, and your book provides this idea, I've never done it this way, but it actually does help students, so it's not a bad idea, is to make believe the battery's not there and put a switch in its place. Okay, let's put a switch here. We'll make it a closed switch, okay, it's fine. But put a switch there and make believe the battery's not there. Now, make believe you cut right through the switch. Put a cut right here through the switch and then open up the circuit. Fan it open like this and fan that one open to make it a long line. It would look like the following. Mm -hmm. 
And that's what it would look like. This would be six. I'm sorry, three. Three, three, three. Oops. Three, six, and the one from the outer part, right? Look, here's the three. Open up the circuit. The three comes out front. The six comes next. Then you hit the parallels, the parallel part. Six, two, and four. And then fanning this open, you have the one. Okay, that's a good, it, it, it does help students a lot. I never learned it that way, but it makes sense. Now, what you want to do next is identify anything in series because it's just easier, right? Three and six, aren't they in series? What's three plus six? Next, the top part of the parallel part is also in series. What is it? Eight. Eight. Wait, so you would add four? No, because the four is in... Oh, parallel. Yeah. Wait, what? That's parallel. So take a look. Three and six is in series. It becomes nine. Six and two are also in series within the parallel, giving you eight. Okay, it's within the parallel. Now, the number nine, the number one, and whatever this is, is all in series, but we need to figure out whatever this is. So eight and four in parallel, how would I do that? How would I do eight and four in parallel? How do I find an equivalent? I want you to be able to do this on the next line, watch. I want you to tell me what goes in the place of the middle resistor. That's a one and that's a nine. What can I replace the eight and four with? How do I figure it out? It's in parallel. Come on, go, look at your laws. Look at your laws. So what do I do? Tell me, mathematically. No. One over A plus one over four. One over REQ equals. One over A plus one over four. It's not one over twelve. You can't add denominators, right? That's that's the, this is the common mistake, though. People add that. Now, an eighth and a fourth come out to be point three seven five. Or three-eighths, really, yeah. Now we have to do the reciprocal of that, which is eight-thirds, or 2.7, approximately. So that is the equivalent resistance for this middle portion. Again, part was in series, part was in parallel. Now, what's left? All... All what? Series. So what do I do to them? Add them up. We're going to get 12.7 as my resistor. Now I'm going to put the circuit back and put the battery back in place. And there is my equivalent resistant, resistant, resistance in a circuit form. So this one resistor here is equivalent to all of that weird combination we had in the beginning. That make sense? It provides the same thing as the other one does. Now, obviously, you wouldn't do that because you want little resistors in different spots based on what you're looking at electronically. But to calculate your values, so on the next part I asked you, I said, let's calculate the current in this system. Well, you, there's no way you can calculate the current in all those little pieces when it's separated. And when it's like this, use Ohm's law. Because they provide the same current doesn't mean that they're interchangeable. What do you mean? They're interchangeable in the sense of mathematical laws, but physically, you would have issues with that. You wouldn't do that. But mathematically, that's what we're doing. What do you get using Ohm's law? What do you get using Ohm's law, Nick? 0 0.71 is exactly right. It's a 9-volt battery. I, and that's 12.7. So we get a current of 0 0.71. What are my units? Very good. Okay, now, if you studied AP Physics, you can go a little bit further with this still. Okay, I'm not going to go into that, but what you could do is you could find the voltage and the current across every individual resistor next by breaking it down even further and looking at voltage in each spot. It just gets really messy. Okay, for the sake of simplicity, because we're really honestly just kind of like on the surface here when it comes to this, I'd rather stick with this for now. And this is tough itself. Okay. If you were taking AP Physics like in the next year for electricity, you would go on to look even further into this. Okay, so let me pause here and that's it.